Ted, how would you compare Jabari to other forwards who have already declared for this draft? Well, I think that he's the best player available in the draft, actually. Well, we've got Jabari Parker as the new number one. What he does at Duke, they run the entire offense through him. I mean, he's basically, you know, you've heard the word Grant Hill, I heard Mike Krzyzewski on your show recently. He does play a lot. He can do everything. With the second pick in the 2014 NBA draft, the Milwaukee Bucks select Jabari Parker from Duke University. Jabari Parker once considered the NBA's next megastar or a LeBron James type player. To being struck with injuries and seeing the team that drafted him give up on him at just 22 years old. But the question we'll always be left asking is, what really happened to Jabari Parker's NBA career? And how did he go from flashing his superstar potential to not being able to find a spot on an NBA roster? See, we're nearly a decade removed from the talent-heavy 2014 NBA Draft. The draft that featured future NBA MVPs like Nikola Jokic and Joel Embiid, fringe star talents like Andrew Wiggins and Aaron Gordon, and even a bunch of what-if stories. But the biggest what-if story is none other than Jabari Parker. Yes, he was talented, but how much so? Well, to really understand how and why he became so highly touted and even regarded by some as the next LeBron, you have to dive deeper into how it all started. Back in high school, Jabari Parker graced the cover of Sports Illustrated magazine, hailing him as the next big thing and the next big prospect of the basketball world. A combination of athleticism, playmaking, and going coast to coast is what deeply excited fans all over the world. And one of the biggest reasons he got all that acclaim is because he was literally a LeBron build as a junior in high school. Yeah, we're talking a 6 foot 8 inch tall forward with a pep to his step. In fact, this anonymous NBA scout described Parker as someone out of a video game, saying, the kid is 6'8". He can dribble tremendously well with both hands, he passes with both hands, he even shoots with both hands. He can knock it down from behind the arc with ease, and he's got a first step that's been compared to Oscar Robertson. And when he goes inside, he is a thunderous force under the basket. Hearing a high schooler being talked up that way certainly caught the attention of many schools, as Parker looked to segue from high school to the collegiate level. And you want to know what else? Well, you know how many highly sought after talents sometimes deal with behavioral issues, off the court stuff, maybe some drama and whatnot? Well, as gifted as Jabari was on the court, some praised him even more for his even killed nature off the court. In fact, one of Jabari's high school coaches raved about his character, saying he really is a humble kid, he's grounded. When I went to Simeon the first time, I met the janitor within five minutes of stepping inside the school, and the janitor didn't want to talk to me about Jabari's basketball skills. He wanted to talk to me about how humble he is. As a kid who was quickly catching the social media hype, he stayed focused and didn't let the outside noise bother him. When asked how he dealt with the pressure heaped onto his shoulder, he said, Different parts of my life have helped me get a little more comfortable, reflecting and citing the value of a professional staff. In high school, you don't have the people around you. You don't have the tools to really get better. As his senior year in high school was underway, Jabari Parker finally made his much-anticipated announcement on where he would play basketball at the next level, after spending months deciding between two powerhouses, Duke and Michigan State, Parker ultimately chose Duke University, joining a program that was notorious for producing some of the best NBA talent ever. Without any doubt in anyone's mind, Jabari Parker was the next Duke legend that would go on to not only make it to the NBA, but potentially become the face of the basketball world. But before being drafted, he played his one-and-done season at Duke, and man, was it special. Heck, in his NCAA debut, Parker hit the ground running and put the entire world on notice, scoring 22 points on 8 of 10 shots, making all three of his three-point attempts. In 35 games during the 2013-14 college basketball season, Parker averaged a wowing 19 points and 8 rebounds to go along with an impressive 36% shooting from three-point range. In high school, critics argued that the one thing in his game that wasn't so spectacular was his shooting, 
Now Parker was shooting way above expected, and that was terrifying for the NCAA. He quickly showed us in just his first month at Duke that he had the makings of becoming generationally talented, averaging 23.6 points and 8.7 rebounds on 60% shooting from the floor through his first seven games. But without a doubt, his best game came on March the 8th, scoring a season-high 30 points on 10 of 17 shooting, 11 rebounds, 1 steal, 1 block, and an assist. Parker scored over 20 points in his first seven games at Duke, but he saved his best performance for the Tar Heels. North Carolina started with James Michael McAdoo single covering Parker, then tried Bryce Johnson on him, then tried a 1-2-2 zone, but nothing worked. Parker was aggressive from the start, attacking both McAdoo and Johnson on the block, the two mainstays of UNC's defense. But now the writing was on the wall. The 2014 NBA draft was quickly approaching, and the question now was which team would be lucky enough to draft Jabari Parker? Parker, in 2014, was neck and neck with high-flying Kansas superstar Andrew Wiggins. With Wiggins' explosive game, marked by his thunderous dunks and elite fast-break scoring, he was widely regarded as the best player of that draft. But not much behind him, of course, was Parker, who was projected to go number two overall, even above future NBA superstars like Joel Embiid and, of course, the 41st pick of the draft, Nikola Jokic, the man who was drafted during a Taco Bell ad. When the smoke cleared and the dust settled, the Milwaukee Bucks landed the second overall pick, beating out the Philadelphia 76ers, who were also in the mix to pick first or second overall. With Milwaukee securing the second pick, their plan was simple. Pair their emerging young star Giannis Antetokounmpo with another elite wing player who had an explosive bag of tricks. A plan that felt so masterful that it got many excited for the future in Milwaukee. Not to mention another rising player in Chris Middleton who was also a part of Milwaukee's future puzzle. In his rookie season, the stage was set. Milwaukee started their season a ton better than the previous seasons, opening up 10-7 with their new franchise cornerstone, scoring in double digits in 11 of those 17 games. But unfortunately, after staying healthy all of his high school and college career, just 25 games into his NBA career, Jabari Parker went down with a torn ACL in mid-December on the road against the Phoenix Suns. This was a huge blow to Milwaukee's season and Parker's early development. Of course, Parker would go on to miss the rest of the season with all eyes on next season to see how Parker would bounce back. On the bright side, he was still just 19 years old. You hate to see an injury, but it's always better if it happens when you're young versus when you're older with more tread on those legs. While it was shocking to see Parker go down the way he did, there was still much hope for a resilient future. Ahead of the following NBA season, Milwaukee head coach Jason Kidd had fans' hopes high talking about Parker's return, saying, he looks great. If you were able to watch practice, I'm sure you guys would probably question why he's not playing. But again, he hasn't been cleared by the doctors. But when you watch him out there in his warmups, you can see his body has changed. Impressively enough, when Jabari Parker came back from injury, he somehow was looking sharper than ever, and many chalked up that injury almost as a blessing in disguise, because Parker would get more time off to learn and really see and feel things as he rehabbed his knee. Especially for players that are one-and-done college prospects, we often see how athletes often adapt to the next stage faster if they get a chance to learn before being thrusted out there on the NBA stage. But during the 2015-16 season, Parker hit another level in his game, averaging 14 points despite a slow start to the season. After not cracking double digits in points in his first four games of the season, Parker hit double figures in scoring in 16 of the next 18 games. He also had 10 games of at least 20 points, including a 36-point outburst in late February against Houston. All in all, that season was one of massive success for Parker, who said later that it's a rhythm thing, confidence in my body, trying to trust myself mentally more than anything. A lot of people forget, but it's not an excuse that I took a year off and started playing in November. 
Insert the 2016-17 season for Jabari Parker. A bittersweet season mixed with unfortunate reality and a bunch of what-ifs. For my Milwaukee Bucks fans out there watching, well, this is gonna hurt. See, this was Parker's stage to break out and never look back. And lo and behold, this 21-year-old superstar was proving just that with multiple games of 20 or more points just five games into the new season. By the midway point of the season, Parker already had 20 games scoring at least 20 or more points, including three games of at least 30 points. Even though the Milwaukee Bucks were at best a mediocre team record-wise, this was so thrilling to watch with the young pairing of Parker and Giannis, both averaging over 20 points a game and taking the league over as the next superstar wing duo. But not only was Parker the younger and more exciting star at the time, he was actually the featured guy on the team. Yes, this was Jabari Parker Town in Milwaukee before it became Giannis's show. Not only was Parker playing the most minutes on the team, he was attempting more shots and had a higher usage rate than future NBA MVP Giannis. This superstar duo made Milwaukee's offense among the best in the NBA, tallying a 110 offensive rating with more than 75% of the season passed. On February 3rd, Parker went off for another 25 plus point triple double, but this insane ride came crashing down just five days later. See, on February 8, 2017, Jabari Parker went down against the Miami Heat with another torn ACL. And what hurts even more is that in the just 20 minutes he had played in that game up to that point, Parker already had 14 points and a couple of three-pointers. He was well on his way to another 25 or 30 point performance. Instead, his season ended right then and there, completely devastating Bucks fans as Parker knew he had another long road to recovery. If we flash back to the ACL tear he had less than three years earlier, it was a contact injury. But this time, it was a complete freak accident and incredibly unfortunate that his knee buckled the way it did. Just a month away from only his 22nd birthday, here Parker was, facing yet another career jeopardizing injury. But still, he kept his head high, saying at the time, I flipped a switch and said, hey, you've just gotta get up and work. Being sad, that's not gonna do anything for you. That's not gonna do much for me. Just gotta keep grinding and never give up. He kept his composure and his positivity outwardly, but you can't help but think that deep down inside, he must have felt like, why me? When the 2017-18 season came around, there was that hope that Parker would be able to bounce back a second time from such a terrible injury. But still, Bucks fans were nervous that even the youngster wouldn't be able to overcome multiple injuries sustained on the same knee. And sure enough, that fear became a brutal reality. See, Parker was never someone who couldn't play, regardless of how banged up he was. I mean, in the games suited up for in the 2017-18 season, he averaged 13 points and showed flashes of his former self. After missing an entire year of basketball, Parker returned in February of 2018. But the thing is, as Parker sat out an entire year, the team became almost completely Giannis Antetokounmpo's. Without Jabari Parker, Giannis led the Bucks to a 20-11 finish to the previous NBA season as Giannis stepped up as a legit future MVP candidate. And by the time Parker was set to return, Giannis was already levels ahead of any other young player in the league, averaging career highs across the board and doing things this league hadn't seen before. So when Parker was reinserted into the lineup, he had to play a lesser role something he wasn't ever used to, dating back to his grade school days. You see, when you leave as the man in charge and come back just to find out someone has overtaken you and has run away with the opportunity, that's a tough feeling. For Parker, he saw that he would no longer challenge Giannis as the future face of the team, especially not after two major injuries. But to Parker's credit, he hung in there, even scoring 35 points in a late season game against Denver. But when the 2018 playoffs started, it was all Giannis leading the way, as Parker's minutes fell and his role lessened. Even though Milwaukee lost a tough seven-game series against Jason Tatum's young Boston Celtics, the writing was on the wall for Parker and the Bucks. Their days together were numbered. 
Seeing his value and role diminishing in Milwaukee, Parker used this opportunity to take his talents elsewhere, feeling that he could regain his lead role on a team that could use some young firepower. In July of 2018, Parker signed with the Bulls, but this move turned into a momentous flop. Less than halfway into the season, the Bulls completely dropped Parker out of the rotation. On performance alone, Parker wasn't playing close to his best basketball. He averaged 16 points, but shot just 29% from three-point range and turned the ball over a career-high three times per game. He also ranked at the bottom of the barrel in real plus minutes. His lackluster offense paired with his subpar defense ruined his value. So the Bulls moved on from him at the trade deadline. But this, of course, wouldn't be his final stop either. Parker would go on to play for a total of four teams in just two seasons after departing from Milwaukee. Again, the main knocks on his game being his poor shooting and his below average defense. And for a player who is trying to work his way back into game shape, missing two huge qualities like that is a one-way ticket to being completely passed by in the NBA. Not finding a role with any team for a couple of seasons, success in the NBA seemed out of the cards for the still just 25-year-old Parker. Insane. Still, in 2020, the Boston Celtics gave Parker a call and an opportunity. Of course, unlike the previous teams he was on, Boston's roster was already a set hierarchy, so being the man was an opportunity that wouldn't present itself ever again. After an up-and-down year and a half in Boston, Parker's most recent stint in the NBA came in early January of 2022, before being cut. Just eight years after being drafted, Parker was officially out of the NBA not knowing what or where his next step would be. Like many former NBA talents, Parker found a home overseas in the EuroLeague. Playing for FC Barcelona, he signed a contract with the club last summer and is looking like he has a future playing internationally. But as we look back on it today, Jabari Parker was a player that absolutely would have succeeded in the NBA had it not been for the second ACL tear. To think that this man bounced back after his first torn ACL and had Milwaukee thinking that he was the future even over Giannis, that's an achievement on its own. That 2017 season was shaping up to be something special, but like we have for many other players in the past, we'll always be left asking, what if?